All right, welcome everyone to Go in Five Minutes, episode 29. We're going to continue the Buffalo series today. So uh, we took a little detour. We're coming back to it. Uh, in episode 25, that was the last time we talked about Buffalo, we talked about templating with the plush templating language. All right, so we're going to continue with sort of the front end stuff. We're not going to go to databases or anything like that just yet. Uh, and we're going to talk about login. So Buffalo kind of gives you two ways to log in. Uh, one is with like built-in login and you can do your user objects and you can put it in a database and all that stuff. And the other way is you can do external login with other sites like login with GitHub, login with Twitter, login with Facebook and so on. So today we're going to go over that and we're going to choose GitHub login because that's my favorite and I love that service and we all use it. And of course, Go in 5 Minutes is all hosted on GitHub as well. So we're going to use GitHub login and we're also going to pick up a library that's really tightly integrated with Buffalo called Goth. All right. So Goth is really handy because it takes care of like the entire login flow and it has a code generator that's hooked up to Buffalo that will generate like 99% of the code that you need to get your GitHub login working. There's kind of a little bit of administrative stuff around it, uh, but really you get almost everything for free. Okay, so there's a ton of notes and show notes in this readme on how to get going. Uh, but basically what I did to start was just run these two commands. So I ran go get uh, to download this Buffalo plugin and then I used the plugin. I did Buffalo generate goth and then I passed the GitHub provider. So what that means is I'm telling the goth code generator that I want to do login with GitHub. Now you can pass more providers here too if you want. Uh, and goth I think has like over 20 providers that it supports. Uh, but you can check out the link in the show notes below as well. Okay, so we're going to go and check out some of the code here. And it's all basically lives in actions. So I ran this buffalo generate command and it spit out a file here called auth.go. Now I modified this file just a little bit, uh, but it's pretty much the exact same code just wrapped up in a little different package uh, that I prefer sort of the shape of. So the main two things to look at here are this goth.useProviders function call. So a provider in Goth is a, an app, like a, a website that I want to offer login through. So again, I'm using GitHub. Uh, I created a GitHub app, uh, an OAuth app to be specific, and I got back a GitHub key and a GitHub secret. Uh, and I put the key and secret into this file down here, this .env file. Uh, and that .env file, basically Buffalo Dev and Buffalo Build, will read the values in that .env file and then inject them into the environment of my app. So when I run Buffalo Dev locally, then I get access to key and secret just as if they were environment variables. So I can do os.getenv and I get access to the GitHub key and the GitHub secret just the same as if I put them in my sort of real environment in my terminal. Okay, the other thing here is the auth callback. So the auth callback is code that I plainly didn't touch. So it's just generated completely. And the auth callback has this call, and this is really the most important call, is the gothic.completeUserAuth. And I'll explain how that works uh, in a second when we see this thing in action. And then finally, we are going to just dump out information on the GitHub user that we got back from GitHub after we logged in. And we're going to dump it out in JSON, and we'll see that in the browser. So the second piece is in app.go. And really, the only thing that was generated is this, these uh, three lines. The first line here is we're creating a path group for auth. And we saw how path groups work in a previous uh, episode on Buffalo. And then we created two actual paths under that group. So we have slash auth slash provider. Uh, and in our case, we only have one provider, GitHub. So we would have a slash auth slash GitHub path. And also we would have a slash auth slash GitHub slash callback path. So the first one here is where we would have a link to go to slash auth slash GitHub. And that would initiate the GitHub login process. 
And then after GitHub is done doing the login, it would then redirect back to the app and it would redirect to slash auth slash GitHub slash callback. And that would be where this function here called auth callback would kick in and make sure that the user is logged in and then would go fetch information on the user from GitHub. Okay, so before we see it in action, let's go check out GitHub and look at how you would create an actual app so that you can get access to the GitHub secret and the GitHub key, which those were here and here, okay? So what you do is you go to GitHub, create an account if you don't have one, go to the upper right into your uh, settings. So you click settings there, click on developer settings, and then go to OAuth apps. Okay, so I created one already here, uh, but we're just gonna kind of imagine another one. So, so we have a, we put a name in there, we put a, uh, a URL for the web page, and these are for GitHub to be able to show details on the app when the user tries to go and log in through GitHub. The last piece here, this is by far the most important piece. You wanna make sure that this callback URL is exactly the same thing as what you put over here. Okay, so I have actually typed it out explicitly as opposed to using any of the variables that exist in the app to be able to tell what the actual running IP uh, or host name of the app is. So I typed it out here and I literally copied and pasted it from here into GitHub. So I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste. And then when you click register application, you'll see that you get uh, something called a client ID and a client secret, okay? So the client ID corresponds to GitHub key, client secret corresponds to GitHub secret, and you would take those values and then just put them into your .env. So I'm not gonna show what's in my .env and I'm not gonna show what register application spits out uh, because those will, those will be live and valid keys and secrets uh, for anyone in the world to use. So I don't wanna show that on video just yet. Um, okay, so that's the basics on here. You create an app. I have created an app and I've set everything up. So I have my values in my .env and I'm going to close down my running app. I'm gonna do Buffalo Dev, just like normal. Uh, we started up our app and we're on port 3000. So I'm gonna to go to 127.0.0.1 port 3000, open up a new tab. And this is sort of the can Buffalo homepage. And we've got this and this. Again, so we've seen these before, slash auth slash provider, and then the same thing and then slash callback append to the end. So if you have a button that's like login with GitHub, you would want to go to slash auth slash GitHub. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the provider here and put in an actual provider. Okay, so press enter here. And you're gonna see, this is what the user would see the first time they click that link. So after I authorize, the next time I go to login with GitHub, I won't get this screen and it'll really just redirect to GitHub and then GitHub will immediately redirect back to my app. So the user will see like a flicker and that's it. But the first time they'll see this. So I'm gonna authorize and it is going to now redirect back to my web app. So we're back to 127.0.0.1 port 3000. And it's dumping out a bunch of data in JSON format that came from GitHub that tells my web app GitHub uh, information about me on GitHub. So all that magic happened here in the auth callback. So in app, we registered the slash callback uh, path with auth, auth callback. So this is the Buffalo handler to deal with what happens after data comes back from GitHub. And so really, like I mentioned, this is the magical function. So gothic.complete user auth does two major things. First is it takes care of reading in and making sense of all of this query string stuff. So one of the big selling points about goth is that it abstracts away all this stuff. So this is OAuth related things and I don't have to care and I love that. The second thing is 
it uses this to get access to my user profile information on GitHub, since I'm the one who clicked authorize application on that GitHub login page. Okay, so once it got that user information, then it returned it in here, in this variable called user. And then I just simply decided to dump the user information back out onto the web page, just in JSON format. So if we go there, you can see all this stuff, all this stuff that I was able then to make my web app get access to from GitHub. Okay, so there are different levels of permission that I could have set my OAuth application to request from the user. Um, I selected pretty much everything, but in read only. Uh, and so if you're building an app uh, and you want to allow folks to log in via GitHub, uh, please try to select sort of the minimal amount of information that you need to make your web app work um, so that you're not going and just like gathering all the possible information about someone's profile on GitHub. But this is to show sort of what the options are. This is all read only, although you can make an app that does writes to GitHub as well, that has the privileges to write data into your GitHub profile. Uh, but this is read only for me. Uh, and we've got a ton of stuff here. So these are all the options of what your app can consume from a user on GitHub. Okay, so that's going to about do it. Um, we saw sort of the ability to generate a ton of the code that we need to do login with GitHub. The same thing would go for login with other platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and so on. So I really encourage you to go check out the README uh, for this episode. Check out these links. So. The, there's great docs on, uh, on the Buffalo website for how to use Goth. There's also great docs uh, how to use the code generator for Buffalo and Goth. Uh, and then there's Goth itself. So the Goth library itself actually has nothing to do with Buffalo. So you could use it in any app, uh, any framework that you want in Go. Um, but this is kind of the magic that binds the two together. This is the Buffalo Goth sort of plugin that binds together the goth side and the buffalo side so check that out even if you don't have a buffalo app this is really cool and it's a really easy way to add in uh, sort of login via third-party sites uh, on whatever framework you're using in your go server all right so yeah go check that out i wish you the best of luck integrating tons of different providers in for login on your site and that does it for today i'll see you next time take care gophers